Good morning, dear family. Oh, it's good to see you this morning, all these beautiful Christmas reds and greens. My goodness, beautiful, beautiful picture. We've gathered together this morning here at Torrance First Baptist to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we want to begin with reading God's word. Psalm 43, verses 3 and 4. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. And we're going to pray them with our hearts and our voices this morning. Well, let's start by singing a great Christmas carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory. The lyrics will be uh, overhead, but if you want to turn, it's number 259 in your songbooks. Let's stand as we sing. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight or all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story. Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the Turn to those around you and say, welcome, Merry Christmas. Good morning, TFP Church. <laughs> Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and our theme for this morning is joy. We're about to hear some joyful singing from our children in our adult worship choir. I can't wait. One of the most well-known Christmas carols begins, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Another song we will sing during this season says, Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. It continues, joy, unspeakable joy, rises in my soul, never lets me go. I'm so glad that in a world of darkness and pain that the joy of the Lord never lets me go. Nehemiah and Ezra encouraged the Jews who had recently returned from captivity by telling them, do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What does joy have to do with strength? Everything. Joy isn't just happiness. It isn't just rooted in the things that happen to us. It is rooted in a person, Jesus. Did you know that the Bible mentions joy no fewer than 200 times? Joy is all over the book of Psalms. Psalm 98.4 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. 
break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Or how about Psalm 1611, which says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures that forevermore. And Jesus promises in John 1511 saying, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. The shepherds were given good news of great joy, and they responded by glorifying and praising God. When the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Today, we, we reflect on the joy that God gives us, which was foretold by the prophets and fulfilled today, no wait, by the life of Christ and death. We also take joy in the promise of Christ's return. Have you noticed that one of the candles is not like the others? In church worship, traditionally, the color rose signifies joy. As we light the third Advent candle, the rose candle, let's pray. Yes, let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessing of being in your church today, Lord. Thank you for your gift of salvation to a lost world. Thank you that you loved us so much that you came as God incarnate. What amazing grace, unspeakable love that brings unspeakable joy and hope. May we truly understand what this season means and be thankful that our Savior was born. May we be unselfish in our worship of Jesus and regard him with utmost love, respect, and devotion. In the precious name of Jesus, amen.
to the angels, Jesus was the good news to all the people. To the shepherds, Jesus was a holy child born in the manger sent for mankind. To the wise men, Jesus was the king of the Jews. What does Jesus mean to you and me today? As it was told by the prophet Isaiah, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, wasn't that great? <laughs> yeah, let's give a hand for our kids again. And for Miss Nadine for putting that all together. <laughs> all right, well, I have a few announcements for us this morning, of course. First and foremost are our connection cards that are in the pews in front of you there. If you have any updates or are just new with us this week and would like to give us a, some information about yourself, Go ahead and fill those out, and then you can return them into the little offering boxes in the back there. Then tonight, we have our senior high Christmas party from 5 to 8 p.m., and it's going to be a really good time. We're going to go do the little ice skating that's here downtown Torrance, and then we're going to go get some dinner, and we have a little gift exchange going on. So it's a fun time for those guys. And then... Starting on Tuesday, the 19th, we also have our, sorry, go back to that, because we also have the, <laughs> the young adult Christmas party, not on the sheet here, but 
Um, it's going to be Friday, December 22nd. So those of you college age, come out to that. It's going to be a good time. Um, starting on Tuesday, the 19th, we have our non-perishable food items that are, be, that are going to be available. They're going to be in the annex. It says on the gym in there, but um, yeah. The food will be available in the annex from the 19th to the end of the year. And it's just available for anybody to come by. You can check things out and you can take some. We also have Christmas Eve next Sunday. And so there's not going to be any life groups meeting at 9 AM. But we will still have our morning service, of course. So come to that. And then our 5 PM candlelight service. And if you've been with us for that in the past, you know how much of a great time that is. So we'd love to just have you come out for that. All right. In the beginning, before there was music, before there was sound, a master composer raised the pen to touch the cosmos with the eternal song. The music sang and pulsed and shimmered through the halls of creation. It vibrated the universe and moved the planets along their paths. The ancient melody swirled around the blue planet and whispered in the passing breezes and rolled with the ocean's breath. The music could be heard in every creature's call. The master composer wrote this music deeply on the hearts of humanity. But through the generations, prophets would give birth, breath to the music. They dared to rise up and sing melodies written on their hearts. But whenever they rose up, their music carried the same eternal message. Prepare. Prepare. Prepare, Prepare for, for the, the promised, promised one. Prepare, Prepare for, for the, the child of heaven, the, the prince whose name is peace. Throw off your evil state and stand. Clean, clean and ready. ready. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the, the day of the, the promised one's arrival. arrival. Those who walk with no vision and struggle without strength will be restored with light and power and hope.
As the time grew near, the sacred tones began to dance up and down the halls of heaven. The holy chord swelled and the music grew with a mighty crescendo. Its tempo quickened as angels tuned and prepared their songs. The eternal hourglass reached its seconds and hours and years, and the time grew closer to send the redemption song to earth. But, but this, this time, it, it was, was not only the song that would be sent, but the, the very child of heaven. heaven. Angels lined the halls ready to depart for earth. One by one they were dispatched as they went to whisper the music into the ears of humanity. Joseph, take Mary to be your wife. She carries a holy child. She will bring forth a firstborn son, and he is the Son of God, the Son of And so the moment came when the composer took heaven's son and blessed him and formed a seed wrapped with divinity, rich with immortality, acquainted with heaven, but ready to enter this world. The divinity seed was planted in the humanity of a woman. 
The coming together brought heaven and earth into unity. The nature of God was fused with the human heart, and the fruit was completely perfect. And while this perfect union was not touched by the dust of the sinful world, the child formed by heaven and earth brought a holy presence to humanity's void. The eternal was wrapped in the temporal. Perfection was planted into imperfection. Power and omnipotence were fused with frailty and vulnerability. But when this union was done, it was perfect. It was right. And the history of the blue planet began once more. The child's first breath produced a cry heard across the hay of the stable. The first cry of a newborn is a beautiful sound. All human ears will stop and listen to the song of a new resident of the earth, a new brother or sister of humanity. He sings in the most primal voice and calls out in protest as he enters the new world. But to the ones who receive him, the newborn song announces that all is well. Another precious soul has crossed from the safety of the womb to become a new resident of this world. Joyful tears abound as the newborn proclaims to all around him, I am here, I am safe, and I am alive. The silent moon is shining, but suddenly silence breaks. Now work to be done till the morning sun for a child is on the way a child is on the
The cry of heaven's child was a beautiful sound to the ears of his mother. She surrounded him with warm, loving arms and blessed him with her adoring gaze and tender words of assurance. But outside their cocoon of quiet love and joy, the earth struggled under the injustice of domination, power, and enslavement. The world desperately needed to hear a new voice and a new song. Even in those first days, the joy of the cry child's arrival came to those with open minds and hearts. And now, today, those who will grow still and listen may hear the heavenly song and receive the peace and joy of the child, our Emmanuel. The sun had left for the night, and a chilly moon drifted in to take its place. The cold sent the men to their fires, huddled, half-chilled, and crouched under the load of their existence. For them, the blueness of their planet was mostly covered by the drab brown hues of dirt and drudgery. Sameness was their fare. Futility kept them in their place. But heaven smiled on them in their dinginess. On this night, angels would pass over the people of higher birth and tell these men of the earth about heaven's child. An <laughs> angel's salutation startled the men from their drowsy rest, but then calmed their fright and told them about the birth of the child. The angel pointed them toward the birth town where they could go and see the newborn. Then, like a triumphant symbol crash, a host of angels exclaimed praise to the heaven's master and blessed the earth with a prayer for peace. After the angels left, the night seemed to lose its chill, and the dark sky seemed to glow with excitement. 
Still wearing all the stains and smells of the earth, the men left the warmth of their fires to answer the angel's call. With great celebration, they clambered down the road leading into town. For the rest of their lives, they would tell anyone who would listen about the night that heaven's angel sent them running to see the holy child. The men quickly found the child in a humble state, lying on a bed of hay. The place seemed to become a temple as they gazed on the child's heavenly countenance. Beauty is seen only by those who will open their eyes. A song is cherished only by those who will draw quiet to listen. And a heavenly sign is beheld only by those who raise their vision in search of it. There were other men from a distant land who raised their eyes to the heavens. For them... The night sky was a black parchment upon which the Creator wrote the order and purpose of humanity. Through the long chill of night, as they searched the heavens for a sign of divine guidance, they came upon a star that seemed to whisper to them, He is here. A newborn king has been born. Go and see him. Faithful to their sky watching, they embarked upon the dusty road to follow the star's beckoning. The star drew them into a land of ancient wars and heavenly revelations. But true to its path, it led them to the feet of heaven's child. With great reverence, they offered him their truest worship and finest treasures. Their openness to the heavens and their faithfulness to the path have led them to worship in the presence of the newborn king.
The old priest awoke, and the new morning sun washed across his eyes like thousands of suns had before. He wrestled his stiff bones upright until his feet found the floor. With a long breath, he wondered how many more days the sun would find his fading eyes. Down the street, the old priest shuffled, slower than he had walked yesterday, but faster than he would tomorrow. The stiffness of age weighed him down, but faithfulness pushed his curved frame forward. Then a twinge of the heart awakened his hope. Could it be today? Could this be the day when the Creator's unspoken promise would be kept and he would see heaven's child, the Redeemer of Israel? In the corner of the temple walls, he perched on his eternal station and eyed all who passed through the gates of worship. Then his breath paused as his tired heart felt a youthful surge. His aging eyes widened to watch the young people carrying their newborn. He studied them for a moment and then hopped up with the legs of a younger man. The spirit warmed his soul as he brought them his breathless greeting. His voice shook as he welcomed them with what could call both speaking and singing. He exclaimed his praises and blessings with a melodic tone he had not heard since his youth, sweet and clear, so full of truth and assurance. A fresh smile creased his weathered skin as his eyes beamed through their clouded lens. He had seen the Holy One. At once, he was filled with joy and relief. His life would no longer dangle unfinished in the waiting. Though he would still receive each day as a gift, he felt his life was complete. For he had seen the Lord's salvation. He had seen heaven's child. And now we may echo his words and feel his rejuvenation and joy. For all who truly see his truth and receive the Lord's salvation may live forever with peaceful hearts and restored souls. My eyes have seen the child I've seen the Lord's salvation, the Lord has shown to me the promised Holy One. My eyes have seen the child, the revelation light.
master composer who breathed the song into existence now stirs the music in all of us. Through heaven's child, a new spirit shimmers through the, our souls and swells up within us. Everyone who hears the message of the angels may echo the song they sing. And, and so, so let, us let us rise up to, to join the heaven's, heaven's angels to, to celebrate the coming of heaven's child, who is Christ the Lord. Let's give them a hand, everybody. Uh, great job, choir. Uh, Randy, great job leading us. Thank you so much for that. Um, we got a couple more thanks to give. Uh, first, we got to start with the kids. Nadine and kids, come on now. Come on. Great job, everybody. So, so cute. I, I love that song. You can't take Jesus out of Christmas. That's right, because if you do, there is no Christ. Must, right? Amen, amen. Houston, thanks for running sound for us up there. We got Jim doing the streaming. JJ down here doing the slides. Tom and Sarah just setting the scene with the, with the amazing narration. Our soloist, choir. Great job, you guys. Uh, and thank you for pointing us to the Lord. Um, because that's what this is all about, right? The, the musical is entitled Heaven's Child. It's, it's a chance for us to kind of take a break from the hustle and bustle of the season. I literally have like a gajillion things to do today right after the service. How many of you are like me today? My goodness, things are going so fast and it'd be so easy to lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas that God decided to become a man, to step down into darkness, to take on flesh and become one of us so that he might save us those on whom his favor rests. Amen and amen. I want to share with you guys a poem by one of my favorite authors, Madeline Lingle. I don't know if you recognize that name. She wrote A Wrinkle in Time. She's a firm believer in Jesus Christ, and she wrote this, this poem. 
It says, he did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguished shame. He came, and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn in the mystery of the world, word made flesh. The maker of the stars was born. And so we cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice for to share our grief, to touch our pain. He came with love. Rejoice. Rejoice. Amen. Amen. Notice that, I hope you notice that phrase, he did not wait. She uses it thrice. Yes, thrice is a good word to use at Christmas time. But anyways, she did not, he did not wait until peace. The first time was to indicate that God didn't wait until the world was ready in terms of peace. Political unrest was the norm for Israel. Huh, sounds a lot like today, does it not? Right? Rome was just the latest in a long line of those who sought to control Israel. The Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Medes, Persians, Greeks, yada, 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 yada. On and on. Right? Yet as we know, when the multitude of the heavenly host appeared, they praised God. What did they say? Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among those with whom he is pleased. Luke 2, 14. And so he did not come. He did not wait until there was peace because he came to bring peace. He also did not wait until all the needs were met. Jesus came for the outcast. He came for the poor. He came healing the sick and giving sight to the blind and making the lame walk and casting out demons. Mary knew this. as She magnified the Lord with her song, saying in Luke 1, 53 and 54, he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. So he did not come when every need was met because he came to meet every need. Thirdly, he did not come until everyone was perfect, right? The heart is deceitful. The stain of sin is real. Guilt, shame, fear, immorality, darkness, dysfunction, addiction, and division. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, knew this as he prophesied, saying in Luke 1, 68 through 69, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And so he did not wait until everybody was perfect and there was no sin. He came to forgive sin. Amen and amen. And yet, even though he did not wait... It says in Scripture that he came in the fullness of time. He came exactly when he meant to come. He came exactly when we needed it the most. He came in the fullness of time. He came in the fullness of time to redeem those under the law. You see, the law was powerless to save. All the law could do was reveal sin, was remind us of how bad we are. And so he came to bring a new kind of covenant, a new life. Because the law was powerless to save. It could only point out the reality of sin. It could not give us a relationship with the Father. And so in Galatians 4, 4 through 7, Paul says this. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. See, now we have redemption. Now we have adoption. Now we have forgiveness. Now we have freedom. Now we have salvation. Because he came in the fullness of time. He also came in the fullness of time to unite 
all things. This year we have seen how Christ, the one Lord, by the one Spirit and to the glory of the one God and Father, has made us one church. Amen. Let me say it again. One. Amen and amen. Ephesians. You knew I had to go back there today, right? Ephesians 1, 3 through 10 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Now, Jew and Gentile have been made one. Now, we, we can have unity. Now, we can have peace. Now, we can have joy. Now, we can spread love because that's why he came in the fullness of time. And so, glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us in sending your son Jesus to become one of us, to step down into darkness, to open our eyes that we might see you didn't come when things were perfect. You didn't come when things were peaceful. You didn't come when we had all of our stuff together. You came when we were broken. You came when we were in need. You came in our desperation because you saw us and you knew us and you knew that we couldn't do it on our own. And so, Lord Jesus, you took upon flesh, and you became one of us. We can't even describe that. We can't even imagine that, God. And so all we can do is drop to our knees in praise and thanksgiving and prayer. God, thank you. Thank you that you came in the fullness of time to make sure that we were no longer under the curse of the law. Thank you that you came in the fullness of time to make sure that we would be united as one church under one Lord. And it is to you that we pray today, and it's to you we give all glory, honor, and praise. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Praise you, God, in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing song together. Let's sing two stanzas of angels we have heard on high. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Yes. 
glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among whom on his favor rests. Amen and amen. Please, please join us next week. We have both a morning service at 1030, which will be kind of like a family service where we'll just be together and be one church. And then we'll have our candlelight service next Sunday evening at 5 p.m., which you won't want to miss as we, as we kind of end the year on just this high note of lighting those candles and singing Silent Night. Um, God is good. We hope you join us for that. Uh, there will be no life groups the next two weeks, but there will be patio time. So come for fellowship. Come at 10 and grab some coffee and, st- and goodies with me because I want to just see everybody there as we celebrate Christmas together. So we'll see you guys next week. God bless you. Go declaring his glory. Amen. <laughs>